this is part two of the Melodies online purchasing system. Um, so now, instead of looking at the, instead of looking at drawing the context, which is what we've done here, and you can see we did that in part one, we are now going to create a data flow diagram for the system. So a lot of people get confused between the point of when they've got their context diagram to when they're then drawing their uh, DFD. Uh, but basically, you need a lot of the information we've already outlined to draw our, our diagram. That's why we do our context diagram first. So for example, our external entities, our customer, our bank, they don't change. We've already identified that these are the, the external people who are going to be using or, or sending information in and out of our system. So they need to stay. So customer, bank stays. We also have already identified the information that's going to be coming in and out of, of the system. So those labels may change slightly or they may go to different places, but essentially there's the same amount of information coming in and out of the system that it did already. We're not changing any of the company's processes. So the only thing we really need to do first of all is to get rid of this boundary system. So now we're going to be looking at inside our system. It's moving from a physical description to a logical. So we're going to look at what's inside this. So I'll get rid of the boundary system. And for this, uh, this one it's quite easy. They've actually given you the processes already. So that makes your job nice and easy. So I'll make them appear. And oh, make that go. Okay. So we now have our processes. So the first thing you need to do with your processes is to make sure that you number them. So this is a level zero diagram. So all of your processes we labeled 1.0, 2.0. Three point zero. Oh, nice, easy. Process one, process two, process three. So process one is everything concerned with the new customer process and when people register for your system, that's where they're going to go. Number two is your song purchase process. So anything to do with the purchasing of the song, that's where the information is going to be processed. And anything to do with the th uh, number three is the payment process. Anything to do with payment, for example, credit card details, that's going to be your, your number three process. So processes, remember um, our root rules for processes must have something which goes into the process but also out of the process. You can't have some, everything going into a process. That would be wrong. The information has to go somewhere. It's not a data store. It is a process. So process needs to process the information and send it somewhere. Also remember before we said that there's no uh, data store in a context diagram. So we crossed out here, we crossed out the online data, um, database. So the, we can now include our database. So let's include him in there first off. So what is he? He is the customer's personal details are stored in Melly's online database. So for a data store, we do our two lines. Two lines. And it's called. Okay, so that's my data store. And we know that the email details, when the new customer is created, would go into there. So all we're really saying here is this email details are going to come, that, we're going to make a join up. Email details are going to go into this process and then they're going to go into the data store. Okay, so that's where they end up. They go in and then they come out and they're stored in that database. Um, also, when the new user is created, we also have the username and details which are going to come out. So that's a part of the new process. So the user and password details will come out of this new process, but where do they come from? They're going to have to come from the customer store. So that will be all the customer's details. And we'll call this one again user pass details. Okay, so we can see the information is passed from the user store, sorry, from the customer store. The user details are passed through this process and then it sends them out. Okay, it can get a little bit messy, we'll neaten it up later on. Okay, these customer details, um, sorry, credit card details, we know that they're going to be part of this payment process, so let's scrub them out. Really get in the way, and let's make them put into this. Okay, that credit card details. 
Okay, so that's the same as it was before, we just redirected it elsewhere. Okay. So what else would we have to do with the this information here for the new customers? Well, the only other information you're going to need is when we're going to be sending some um, some purchase information, we're going to need that information as well. We're going to need the email details so that the, we know where the input is going to be sent. So from the data store, we can also send information to this process here. And again, that will be the email details. So if you think if you're programming this, and this is your database table, you're, you're going to need to write a little code which request from the database, please select um, this um, customer's details where this equals something. Okay, and it's going to return their email address so that you can um, import it into your email uh, sending form and that will then send off to the customer. So from this next uh, process, the songs uh, purchase process, we have the email details going in we're going to have the purchase details coming in. Oops, purchase details. Um, and we're going to have the invoice details coming out. So invoice details, let's put that into there. I'll get rid of some of these because it's just getting a little bit confusing. Just keep in mind that we're going to end up with the same amount of things that we had before. That. Okay, so we've got email receipt, I can move that, because that hasn't been joined up yet. And we'll need up this one just to make it a bit more. Email details. I'll move this one, just so it's nice and neat. These are Okay, so that process we can see is pretty much done. Okay, we know that the information from this process has been passed through here. It's going into into number two. That's all fine. We can pretty much call that one finished. The only one we need to do with the, with the, this uh, process two is to include this section here, which we didn't previously have a data flow for. So this is one extra data flow that we pr didn't previously have. The reason we didn't have it before. Is because we didn't know about the updating invoice table, so we've added that flow in. Okay, so we want to send to the purchase song all the purchase details. Okay, purchase details. Nice, easy. Okay, so. The invoice details will be need to be stored in a different data store. So this data store will be called the purchase store. So this is just a record of anything which has been purchased by customers, sort of like a sales record, so that then you could do your accounts and see what's getting purchased and what isn't. So purchase store. Oops. Uh, I just remember when you're going through these scenarios, anytime you see something like store or database, you know that that's going to be a file store, so you can then assume that you're going to have this into the level one. Okay, so the invoice details we put into there. Invoice details will have customers' names, who purchased it, how much it was, all those sort of information which will be stored into your database. Okay, so that's our purchase store. There also, there's also going to be a little bit of duplication of flows here because Remember to our bank we had one flow out, which was the uh, funds request. request. And we had the other one which was the funds transfer. These weren't anything new, these were ones which I just rubbed out before because it was just getting a bit messy. Okay, so that same information is going to need to also go between the purchase records. So when purchasing is made, you're going to need to know what funds were transferred. Details. 
Okay, and then for the invoice details, you're going to need to draw a flow from the purchase store because that's where all sales information is. Invoice details. And the user can then be sent. Oops. A receipt. And the receipt was a previous one as well. I'll just rub that one out. Okay, so we've got our receipt details, we've got our credit card details, which are still there, that's fine. We've got our transfer of funds, we've got the funds request, we've got the transfer details getting stored into our data store, and we've got the invoice details. Just one more thing on the on the data store before we, we call this finished. Remember that these are, are tables within your database. So in your database is made up of multiple tables. Customer store will be one of them which would have information about the customer's personal details, then purchase store will be another one. So later on we'll go into ER diagrams, and within ER diagrams you ha um, we'll explain a bit more about where this information comes from.